If you're shopping for a new car in 2018, there's a good chance that an SUV like one of these will be on your list. One in every six new car buyers in Australia chooses a midsize SUV as their family hauler of choice. So we've assembled these four models to help you choose which is the right one for you. We've set a $35,000 price cap, so every model you see here is two-wheel drive. In fact, every model is front-wheel drive. Our four contenders are the Honda CR-V VTIS, the Mazda CX-5 Max Sport, the Holden Equinox LS Plus, and the Volkswagen Tiguan 110 TSI Trendline. We'll assess each of these models for its practicality, safety, value for money, and of course, how it drives. Let's get started. First off, practicality. Each of these SUVs is a five-seater, but only the Honda has the option of a seven-seat layout if you're willing to spend a little more. There will also be a new larger Tiguan Allspace seven-seater soon, again, at a higher price. These four are all reasonably useful, and we attempted to fit the same cargo in all four vehicles, the Cars Guide pram and suitcases. We figured this would be a good indication of where these four fit in terms of family friendliness, and you can see for yourself how each of the four fared. We loaded the Volkswagen up in a worst case scenario style, with the sliding second row seating set to optimize better space for occupants rather than boot room. Even so, the Honda was by far the most capacious for cargo room. Really like the low load lip on this CRV. It's the only one with an electric tailgate as well, and the only one with a full size alloy spare wheel. The rest have space savers. All four have rear seat air vents plus bottle holders in their doors, which is great. The space on offer is acceptable in every model when it comes to fitting a six foot tall adult in the back row, but the Mazda again falls short in terms of cabin space. It has the least leg room by far. If you have passengers that are addicted to their devices, the Mazda and Honda will get the kids tick of approval. They've both got two USB ports in the back. Only the very latest version of the Tiguan gets rear USB points, but the Equinox misses out. In the Volkswagen Tiguan, you get the option of extra legroom or extra boot room because of this clever sliding rear seat. And if you have kids, you'll know that legroom is less important than boot room because they take a lot of stuff to go wherever you're going. In this spec of Tiguan though, you do miss out on some storage options. It's the only SUV of these four without map pockets and the only one without a fold down armrest and cup holders. There are the expected ISOFIX child seat anchor points in all four of these SUVs, and all four have top tether points as well. But where all the other SUVs have their top tether points mounted to the backs of the rear seats, in the Honda, they're up here in the headlining, which could mean tangles, especially if you consider the middle seat belt comes down from the roof as well. But in terms of space, the CRV nails it. You can easily fit three adults across the back. There's a nice flat floor and plenty of headroom and legroom as well. Let's take a look at some of the features up front, starting with the media screens. Every one of these SUVs has a touchscreen media system with Bluetooth phone and audio streaming and USB connectivity, but there are some differences between the presentation and plushness of the cabins. They've all got cup holders up front, bottle holders in the door pockets, and fairly good instrumentation, but the Mazda misses out on a digital speedo. Let's take a closer look at each individual cabin. Holden's interior game is at a bit of a low point right now, if you ask me, and the cabin of the Equinox is pretty bland in terms of presentation and the materials used. Although I do really like the seat fabric that they've used in this LS Plus model. The Equinox's media screen can be a bit of a pain, especially if you're a taller driver, because it's a bit of a reach. And also, the reversing camera can take quite a while to get into action. It's the only one of these four to miss out on seatbelt height adjustment, and these buttons on the steering wheel can take some learning. Otherwise, it's a pretty practical thing. Well, apart from this massive center console lid, which I guess could work as a privacy screen if you're playing chauffeur, The Mazda is the only one that misses out on Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it makes up for that shortcoming with SatNav in this spec. The Honda is the only other one of these four with SatNav as standard. 
Along with the screen being touch sensitive at a standstill, you've also got a rotary dial controller, which is really good for controlling things up there when you're on the move. Plus the dual zone climate control is a really nice touch. And the CRV again mirrors the Mazda with dual zone. The others have manual air conditioning. The thing about the Mazda is the materials are all really nice. It looks and feels properly premium, but it also feels the most cramped of these four, up front and in the back. The Volkswagen Tiguan is another example of how plush doesn't have to be pricey. Sure, you miss out on things like smart key and push button start, but it repays you with a really smart and beautifully presented cabin. The cabin looks and feels neat and roomy with good ergonomics and excellent storage as well and thoughtful touches like lining in the door pockets so that things won't crash and clatter around when you're going through corners. I'm a big fan of the media screen in the Volkswagen Tiguan and unlike the models up higher in the Tiguan range, you still get knobs to control the volume and track and tune controls of the screen. Hooray for knobs! If you're after the most practical cabin of these four SUVs, you need to buy the Honda CRV. Simple as that. It has terrific storage between the front seats, including this neat little shelf that you can push back so you can hide things underneath if you don't want them to be seen. It's typical Japanese engineering brilliance. Even so, I don't like that the armrest already has a bit of a squeak to it and the controls don't feel very nice. When it comes to safety kit, all four vehicles have a reversing camera and rear parking sensors. The Mazda and Holden miss out on front sensors that the other two have, and the Volkswagen even has semi-autonomous parking, bettering its competitors. As for airbag coverage, the Honda, Holden and Mazda have dual front, front side and full length curtain airbags for a total of six, while the Volkswagen adds knee coverage, making it a total of seven. All four of these SUVs have the highest possible ANCAP safety rating of five stars, with the Tiguan having been tested in 2016 and the rest in 2017. In the specs we have here, only the Honda misses out on auto emergency braking or AEB. The rest of them have it. The V-Dub adds lane keeping assist, where the Mazda and the Holden have blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. Plus, the Holden has a system that'll buzz your bum to warn you of an obstacle, and it's got lane keeping as well. It's only the Honda that misses out on that smart, active safety kit. At the time we're filming this, you can only get that on the top spec CRV, which means essentially, if you can't afford 45 grand for that model, your safety isn't worth as much. It's a big oversight, and Honda promises that they're going to address it. Check our site to see if they have after you've finished watching this. So what about how these four stack up in terms of value? Here's the list pricing for each model at the time of filming. Remember, that's the price before on-road costs, and you could find even better deals if you're willing to shop around. If you want to find out about the finer details of how each model stacks up in terms of spec, as well as ownership costs and warranty cover, be sure to read our detailed comparison test. Now, let's talk drivetrains. We'll keep the cars where they are to keep it simple. It's clear that the Holden has the torque advantage over its competitors, and there's not that much in terms of weight differences either, so it should offer good performance on the road. Speaking of driving, we'll start off in the Holden and see how these four all stack up. The Equinox has been tuned extensively to Australian standards, and as a result, it offers a pretty inoffensive drive experience. In fact, you could be fooled into thinking you're driving something quite a bit smaller, like a hatchback, rather than a big practical SUV. The steering is direct and really accurate. It feels good in your hands as well, but the ride can be a little bit pitter-pattery. We've seen that in some other Holden products recently, but it's never to the point where it's offensive. As you might expect with such a big torque output, the engine offers good response, though the auto can be a little slow to react. Next up, the Mazda. The CX-5 is the only one of this quartet without a turbocharged engine. But I tell you what, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you like to go for a drive, the CX-5 is probably the pick of the bunch. It's like it's encouraging you to take it out for a spin. The steering's nice and direct and accurate, and not too twitchy either. And the ride's reasonably good as well, but there is lots of road noise. What annoys me most about the CX-5 is its engine noise. It's really not that pleasant to listen to. And you tend to hear it a lot because when you put your foot down, it drops back a couple of gears. 
Thankfully, you can put it into sport mode and it'll hold revs more readily. Third off the rank is the Tiguan. The dual clutch automatic transmission doesn't behave as nicely as a regular automatic or CVT. It can stumble and lurch at low speeds and you've really got to watch your traction when you put your foot down. You can spin the tyres really easily, particularly in the wet. But all is forgiven with the transmission once you get above about 20 k's an hour. There you'll find really smooth shifts and they're really intelligent as well. It coasts along really nicely and there's even a fuel saving two cylinder mode which you can see activated on the driver information screen. The suspension of the Tiguan isn't the plushest here, it can be a little bit crunchy over sharp edges, but it's never offensive and the steering is great. If you're into this Volkswagen SUV, I thoroughly recommend an extended urban test drive to see if you can live with the transmission. And finally, the Honda. I really like the way the CRV drives. It's aimed at mums and dads, and that's what it delivers, a competent and comfortable drive experience. That doesn't mean it isn't fun. The steering's direct, so you can zip between lanes of traffic if you want to, and the ride is really well sorted as well. Not too cushy and not crashy either. The engine is okay. It's no firecracker and it does want to do its best work higher in the rev range like most Honda engines and that's kind of at odds with the fact that it's got a turbocharger. Some of the other cars here are quicker than it, there's no doubt about that. Something else that doesn't really light my fire is the fact that it doesn't have engine start stop so when you come to a stop at a traffic light it just keeps the engine running and it's quite vibey when it does it. If it were my money, I'd be hard pressed to go against the CRV because it does so much so well. That lack of extra safety equipment could be a deal breaker for some though. So, what's the verdict? Well, obviously your personal circumstances will dictate which one you think is the best for you. But it's fair to say you are spoilt for choice in this segment. You could choose the highly affordable Holden Equinox, the family friendly Volkswagen Tiguan, the pragmatic choice, the CRV, or the smaller but funner Mazda CX-5. And in this test, we found the CRV VTIS as the best all rounder when it comes to getting what you should from a mid sized, family focused SUV. But its lack of safety kit penalised it to the point that it ended up in a tie for first place with the Mazda. The CX5 Max Sport doesn't quite have the space we'd like, but it does a lot of other things really well, and that's why so many people buy it. Tell us what you think. Which one of these four SUVs would you buy? Let us know in the comments section and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to read more, check out the full comparison test at carsguide.com.au.